there sure is a lot of uh, miscellaneous on that desk. But today, we are actually not doing any of that. We are going to be looking at how to dump... Uh, what is it? A 27C1024 uh, using uh, the Mini Pro. The Mini Pro TL866. I think mine's a CS model, so I'm missing something that can be added, apparently. I haven't bothered. I think it's an IIS something. Anyway, let's have a look. Oh, there it is, ICSP. So that's the uh, the Mini Pro there. So it's not terribly big. These are quite cheap programmers. They can do a bunch of things. It's actually upside down, I think. There's no correct way up. IC faces that way. So the IC in question here is uh, was sent up by one of the folks on Assembler Games. Uh, I'll link to the thread if someone reminds me. Just having a look at this. So this particular one is an AMD 27C1024. So I'll just ground myself before I get the chip out. Ooh, couple of bent pins, just flex them back. Ooh. The dangers of modern post. Aren't they spectacular? The post office. So here's the uh, chip. So uh, the reason we're dumping this is so we can verify that the original dumps that were done are accurate. Wow, that is just uh, the wrong lens, apparently. What about now? There we go. So there's the chip. So what do we do? So firstly we put the chip into the programmer. That's pretty much a given. Should be. So in this particular one, I think it'll fit perfectly along. Yep. Make sure it's in well and then lock it down. And now that we're locked down, we can head over to the computer side, which you can't see. Ah yes. Windows XP. Oh man, that's that's too big. Okay, where's the mini pro programmer? There we go. Okay, let's see if I can get in frame. Whoop. Okay, so that's about as good as we're gonna get. So what we want to do is we want to select the IC, so the chip in this case. So we know it's an AM, 27C1024. And the very top one there is AMD. So normally, you know, you see the Atmels, you see Hitachis, Fujitsu's, Fairchild's not, not so often, mostly Atmels. But uh, in this case, we use, oh, it's an AMD, so you might as well go for the one that matches as close as it can. And what do you know? There it is. DIP40, uh, dual inline package, 40 pin. So that's the one. So now we want to read it. So we pretty much just hit read. And then it pops up another thing telling me how to position it in the socket, which is how I've done it, thankfully. You might say I've done this before. Hit the read button. Read successful. And then there's no close button, it's a cancel button. English was their second language, apparently. But, you know, you get what you pay for. If I wanted something that was in perfect English, I'd go to the British. If I wanted something that was sort of, you know, half-assing it, I'd go to the Americans. <laughs> Just kidding. You're all terrible. Ooh, new updates for XP, wow. Um, okay, so that's the chip. So, there we go, there's the code on the side there. Probably got to be closer to that. So from that we can tell it's a 1.10 Sega CD boot ROM. And lots of information will be able to be pulled out from that from uh, nerds. 
<laughs> not me, but what I want to do is I want to save this. I want to call it, just give it a file name. Um, we'll call it Sega. And it is now saved. And the dishwasher is done, so I must go. So thanks for watching. That's how you do it. It's pretty easy with the Mini Pro. Um, sadly, it doesn't support as many chips as it could. It doesn't do 42 pin chips. Maybe one day. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. To the dishwasher. The only other thing you might want to do, which I should have mentioned, is uh, you'll want to read it a few times. So, so far I've got uh, two copies. So, let's see, get three. I could read it again. Bloody Twitter. Tell ya. Always something happening on Twitter. And then save it again. Let's see, you got four. Getting creative with the names. And then you'll want to compare them using a some sort of hex editor. I use uh, Hex Fiend on the Mac. Uh, you, there are ones available obviously for Windows and probably a lot more of them. But once you've verified the code is the same, then you're getting good reads each time, which will rule out any uh, checksum errors, I suppose, which I have had trouble with in the past. So always keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching.